So, so far I've just been writing functions like this as f of x. Um, now that's just the most common way to write it, but you can write it other ways too. You could write, if you want, g of x. That's, you know, that's also a function. Uh, you could write a of x. You know, you could pretty much write anything of x. You could write q of x if you want, like that. And so, anyways, this will this is more handy if we're talking about composite functions. And what that is is just a function of a function. So, here we have f as a function of x. But if we wrote something as you know, f of a function of another function uh, would look like this. Actually, let's start with g. Let's say we would have g of f of x. And that is a composite function. So let's describe it here with our function machine analogy. So we'll draw our machines here. Uh, draw one machine, and we'll draw uh, let's draw one more machine here. All right. Okay, so let's color code this so we can watch what's happening. This will be our function f, and let's make this one green. Let's say this is our function g. Okay, so we start off with x, and we're going to input this into our machine. This is our input, uh, or this is our domain of f and we're going to get out f of x. So, right? We've done this multiple times in other videos and this is going to be the range of the function f. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take f of x and we're going to take whatever this value is, f of x, and we're going to input it into our next function and this becomes the domain of the function g. Right? Because the domain is just the input this is what we're putting into the function. Uh, and then we're going to get out g of f of x. f of x. And this is the range of g of x. And now these together is our composite function. And kind of the quick little summary here is you're, if you're wondering how this f of x got inside the brackets, well, for a function f, it's a function of x, which was what we put inside the brackets, which is just everything in our domain. Now, when we have our function g, everything that goes in the brackets is just its domain, and its domain, entire domain, is just this f of x thing here. So that's how we get g of f of x. Now, one of the things we have to notice is, uh, or we have to make sure of, we have to make sure that the range of the function f right here, so the range of it, which is f of x, is a subset of the domain of g. And what that means is um, there might be some limitations to the domain of g for the function to work, and if there's f values, or if there's a f of x values from the first function, so the range values, if those are lying outside of the domain, it's not going to work. So I'll just show you an example here. Um, for example, we have, uh, let's think of one, let's have ln of uh, 2x, let's see, minus 4, something like that. This is a composite function, which is the same thing here as saying, like we wrote before in the notation, uh, g of f of x. Now we can work through it like this uh, visually with our machine method if we'd like. Uh, I have your time, so I might as well. We'll go here, like that, and we'll make our second machine over here, okay? So, our first machine is 2x minus 4, our first function, sorry, 2x minus 4, and our second one is the natural log of this. So, we have, let's see, We'll input our domain, which is x, and we will get out our output, which is f of 2x minus 4. And then we'll use that as our domain and input it into here, and we get out the ln of 2x minus 4. Now there's a problem with this, because if we want to graph this function here, um, we'll see that, here, we'll just draw it really quick. 
miniature version, uh, we'll see that the y-intercept is negative 4 and the slope is 2. So we're getting, uh, say, here we'll write this in, uh, what do we say, negative 4, and when we graph this line, the slope is 2, so it's going to go up like this, something like that. And the x-intercept here will be at positive 2. So now if you notice here, where all of that, where any x value, let's put labels on here, x, y, and this was uh, y is equal to 2x minus 4. So now if you look at this, you'll see that for any, for this line, for this function, for any value of x that's below 2, we're going to get a negative value for our range, which is a problem because uh, if you remember back to the log function and log, natural log video, we actually can't take the log of a negative number. All right, so we'll just write this down just to make sure everyone's on the same page. So if we just had, if we just go back a step and look at just this function alone, uh, its domain is equal to all of the real numbers, and its range is equal to also all of the real numbers. Right, as you can see right here. Now, uh, for any log function, uh, its domain, or for our log function, its domain is has to be x is greater than zero and its range, however, can be all of the real numbers. So in order to get there, we would actually have to come back to the original function. Uh, we'd have to come back to the original function of f and restrict its, restrict its domain so that x is um, greater than 2. It can't equal 2, right? Because uh, when x is equal to 2, this is also 0. And you can't input even 0 into a log function. And doing that will make it so its range is part of the subset of the domain of the next function.